At about $500, the OnePlus 12R could be a really great deal for excellent tech. I was very impressed with the OnePlus 12, which I recently reviewed on my channel. It felt like OnePlus was bringing us that pro flagship in a really killer deal. So now I'm reviewing the OnePlus 12R, which is a beautiful device at an even better price point, with a few caveats, so let's go ahead and get into it. The OnePlus 12R comes in two different configurations. There is an eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage for $499.99, or 16 gigs of RAM to 56 gig storage for $599.99. Now both the RAM and the storage options are a step down from the bigger brother OnePlus 12, which offers 16 512. Now I would like to point out that on the box, the storage size is listed as ROM, which is read-only memory. This one here is the Genshin Impact Special Edition version. It comes with a bunch of bonus items for $650. It is a collaboration item. I just posted an unboxing of the Genshin Impact version on my channel in case you want to see that phone in tons of detail, but the tech specs at the end of the day are exactly the same with some minor adjustments to the experience, mainly just for aesthetics. I am loving the cool blue colorway here, although there is also an iron gray version. Now, obviously I love the violet purple edition though. So I chose to use that special one for my day-to-day -day review and testing. It's just got that really beautiful eye-catching vibe. It totally, totally fits my aesthetic. It's so pretty. The cool blue though is very striking. It's really bright and lovely. And I love this shining backing, although it does pick up plenty of fingerprints. So just put a case on this thing. Now, when it comes to dimensions, this phone is just slightly smaller than an S24 Ultra or my Pixel 8 Pro, it's also got a very nice, comfortable weight to it. Now, similar to the OnePlus 12, this phone also has that aluminum frame on all sides with the slider on the opposite side from the power and the volume buttons, which I really appreciate. It also uses Gorilla Glass Victus 2 for the front and the back. It is IP64, which is water and dust resistant enough to get splashed, but not submerged. Also, a quick correction on my OnePlus 12 review, the OnePlus Plus 12 is actually IP65, it's not IP64. By the way, are you subscribed? If you are not already, click the button right down below. It's completely free to subscribe and it's the easiest way to support my channel. This video is not sponsored. In fact, most of the videos on my channel are not, so they are fully funded by viewers. My Patreon and YouTube membership s'mores it's like Shannon Morris, but shortened into s'mores, are the reason that I'm able to make these videos and cover production costs. And you get several perks for joining. So if you are interested and you wanna keep this content coming, go over to patreon.com slash Shannon Morris, or just join at the button down below this video. Those are the best ways to keep the videos free and available on demand. Now you probably noticed that the display is indeed curved around the edges. The OnePlus 12R has a 6.78 inch AMOLED Pro XDR display, with LTPO 4.0 technology. So that means that you're gonna get vibrant colors, deep blacks, smooth motion whenever you are gaming in things like Genshin Impact, or you're streaming my videos on YouTube, or maybe you're just doom scrolling through your social media. The resolution is a tad lower than the OnePlus 12, but it still looks really crisp and beautiful. The always on display, by the way, is disabled by default in the settings, but you can easily turn that on and then you get your always on display. Yay. So the OnePlus 12R's display does support a dynamic refresh rate, which ranges from one hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. That's gonna be really great for battery life. This phone also supports customized refresh rates like the OnePlus 12. The nits brightness is redonkulous at 4,500 nits. Now that is going to be crazy high, but 1600 is going to be typical for these. On the screen here are some 3D Mark test scores that I ran on the OnePlus 12R. Now this is running Android 14. It's Oxygen OS 14.0, which comes standard out of the box. I have received a few updates on mine since then. It is quite powerful. It is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform, which is a step down from the 12, but still plenty fast. And with options for either 8 gig or 12 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, it is very seamless for multi 
multitasking. The storage is UFS 3.1 as well, so you have fast data speeds, but I do want to set a reminder to check the speed of your USB-C port. The USB-C port on here, if you're doing data transfer for speeds, of course, over wired, the USB-C port is USB 2.0 on here. It's not 3.2 Gen 1 like the OnePlus 12, so data transfer speeds will be just a little bit slower. I need to take a quick break for some sweet tea, so I'll be right back. Oh, I love me some sweet tea. Okay, so here are the specs of the camera on screen. There are going to be three different lenses that you will see on the back. You have your main lens on the top right, the macro lens below that, and then you have your ultra wide on the top left. Now there are some major differences here between the 12 and the 12R with the 12R replacing that periscope telephoto camera with a macro lens instead. And the ultra wide tops out at eight megapixels instead of 48 and there is no Hasselblad color science. So that main 50 megapixel lens is going to give you really good color accurate photos. It gives you great photos in daylight and it turns noisy and somewhat blurry for nighttime photography. There is a slight distortion at the edges, but overall you get very excellent clarity and a really sharp photo for the subject. The natural aperture is going to give you a good steady trail off from the subject, and it doesn't look like it was digitally enhanced. But portrait mode still struggles with my hair. Outside with my little beastie Sookie, I should say big beastie, she's like 65 pounds. For fast moving subjects, the shutter speed did okay, but you will need to take multiple photos to get the in focus ones. The macro lens will give you plenty of detail and closer shots, accurate colors and saturation with some vignetting around the edges, a little bit darker edges. The ultra wide takes away some of that color saturation and the warmth, it just feels a little bit muted and the photos are not as sharp as I would prefer. As you zoom, it only goes up to 20 times zoom. Your photos will eventually be potatoes, even though here Sailor Pluto is still staring into your soul. If you do want more control, you can shoot in RAW as opposed to JPEG. There's also a whole pro mode to set your own ISO, your shutter speed, etc., etc. Now on the front side, you have the 16 megapixel lens. Now I thought the colors look kind of muted overall for my selfies, but they are acceptable. The default aperture, as usual, looks better than portrait mode. I do need to mention here that you can control the f-stop for your out-of-focus background in just regular default mode for both the front and the rear-facing cameras. So do you want it to look more natural? Then use a higher f number. It did struggle when I tried to take a photo of me and my dog while she was in shadow and I was in bright sunlight. You can almost just not even see her. I mean, she's a black furry dog. So that balance between highlights and shadows, it could be better. And lastly, for the cameras, here are some videos showing the front and both the rear facing cameras. Oh, hello. I am testing the stabilization as well as the audio and video on the front facing camera. This is recording in the highest frame rate possible in resolution, which is 1080p. I believe it was 30. And I'm also going to test do you love my collection room? I do. I'm also going to test this with the anti-vibration setting as well. I am doing this all handheld. Wee. Okay, and here is another recording using the anti-vibration setting, which is supposed to help with movements when you're holding it. It zooms in a little bit and it tracks your face. So how does that look? Is it weird? Does it look real? I'm acting like there's an earthquake in here. Oh my God. And here is, I'm using the rear facing camera and this time I'm using it in 4K 60 FPS, which is the highest possible resolution and frame rate for the back facing cameras. It can only do one X zoom if you wanna do that at full resolution. If you wanna stop it down to ultra wide, you have to go to a different setting. So this is the best that I can do. Let me know how it looks. Let me know how it sounds and how the stabilization is. What do y'all think? If you stick this in ultra wide setting, then the uh, highest resolution and frame rate we can get to is 1080p 30. Oh no, my moon fell. I have to stick that up back up there again. Dang it, go V. All right, so here's my collection room. Uh, yes, I'm obsessed. I just renovated this room and painted it. My walls are sparkly. Can you see the sparkles? <laughs> I'm insane. <laughs> so here we have a recording at f1.4 and it is doing okay. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. It's not really sure where to uh, focus. Oh, goodness. Okay, moving into charging and battery life. So the OnePlus 12R supports the 80 watt Super VOOC fast charging, allowing you to go from zero to 100% in 31 minutes here in the US. And it does have a massive 5,500 milliamp per hour battery. So you can easily go all day and then some without even needing to recharge. There is no wireless charging on this one though. I started a battery and screen on time test at 9.50 AM and it lasted to 60% at 10 PM. Yeah, so this baby's gonna last you a really nice long time. Connectivity wise, the OnePlus 12R has support for eSIM. There's dual nano SIM slots. There's 5G connectivity. Plus it packs Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3. Call quality around Denver was excellent, especially when I was driving up to my friend's house to play Magic the Gathering. Audio whenever connected to my earbuds was the same. And the speakers gave me decent audio for a smartphone. I would say they're the speakers are pretty average overall. OnePlus did announce that that the 12R will receive four years of major Android updates and five years of security patches, which is less than the Pixel and the Galaxy lines have updated us with. Now face and fingerprint unlocking, I would say both of those work really well. I had no overall issues with them, no overall issues or problems with either of those. I do appreciate that the face unlock defaults to requiring your eyes to be open and then a swipe to get to the home screen. I did not change those settings whenever I set it up. The Genshin Impact Edition has this fun little special animation. I'll show it to you, it's pretty cool. Whee! Wee. There we go. <laughs> I love it. It's so neat. But obviously that is the same technology as the regular 12R. It is optical. It's not ultrasonic, but rumor has it the OnePlus 13 may include ultrasonic. Again, this is totally a rumor. It's too early to tell, but that is something that people on the internet are writing about. Now, I think the OnePlus 12R is definitely a smartphone worth considering, especially if you get the cheaper one at 500 bucks or you do a trade in to make it really inexpensive. It's got a big battery. It's got fast charging. You've got those good cameras. You got a lovely design. If you don't mind a few lower specs compared to its bigger brother, the OnePlus 12, potentially saving you a few hundred bucks, you can get a really incredibly built phone with a very powerful processor.